We will begin the double scoop snuggle sack in just a moment. Hi everyone, it's Mikey and I'm proud to introduce a brand new pattern series by Yarnspirations.com. It's called the Sleep and Snuggle Sack series. On screen now are other sleep sacks that are available in free pattern and tutorial format. Whimsical and delightful projects that will practically guarantee a warm smile from boys and girls. Super terrific for gift giving and much more. If you're wanting to try another sleep sack, then just click to play and I'll forward you directly to the next one. If you're wanting to do today's project, well, don't wait any further. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Let's begin today's tutorial on working on this fabulous double scoop snuggle sack by Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial is a comprehensive start to finish project. In fact, I'm actually working on this project behind the scenes in between the filming takes to show you what to do step by step. So will that be one scoop or two? Two, of course. This is the double scoop ice cream snuggle sack. Of all the snuggle sacks, this one is my absolute favorite for being contagious to give me a smile look when I look at it. It is super, super cute. For this snuggle sack, there is a front and back panel, which means that there are two cones and four scoops of ice cream. Originally, when I reviewed this on a visual sense, I winced at wondering how hard this was. To my surprise, once you go step by step, it's not hard at all, but there are several steps involved, and I think by the end, you'll be very proud of yourself. Just so that you know, the ice cream scoop is actually using the waffle stitch, and yes, it really does look like a waffle and really completes the look nicely. So let's talk about the ice cream scoops. They're all identical to each other, and to be frank, the first time that you go through the first cone and one scoop of ice cream, it may be a bit slow. And for myself, once I went through one by itself, I went through the second cone and all three other scoops of ice cream with such ease. It's just a matter of understanding the pattern the first time, and then other ones that you need to do after that breeze through real quick. So on screen now is the anatomy of the double scoop and we'll return back to my workshop chalkboard in between each lesson. There are two major steps involved for making this snuggle sack today. Without further ado, let's examine the pattern and let's start from there. So let's review our pattern today. So we have a double sided pattern. So what you see on the front side of this exists on the other side. That means that there's two cones and four scoops of ice cream. Now I know what you're thinking. Look at that cone and look at the scallops of the scoops itself. You know, pretty scary stuff. I have to say, when I looked at this the first time, I literally, my heart stopped. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta teach that on camera. But the reality is, is that once I got into this project, is that this project is not as hard as it, as it seems. And once I really dissected this, I was like, this thing is a piece of cake and I'm gonna be deciphering some of the stuff for you today. So what we have here is a cone and two scoops of ice cream on one side, and then there's a cone, two scoops of ice cream on the other. Let me talk a little bit more about the detail. So in the cone shape, what we have here is that you have what appears to be the waffle stitch. And the waffle stitch, if you really break this down, and I will break it down in just a moment, is that you're seeing a repeat pattern. So these particular squares that give the look of the waffle, that's not just random, they're actually incremental in the way that it's growing. And because of that, it makes it really quite easy to follow. So once we get all of the waffle done, we're gonna then return back to just regular half double crochets and then finish. So this cone actually finishes just behind the pink ice cream right here. So then once you get your pink ice cream scoop done, you just do that one and then the next one just sits above it and this is sewn directly over it. So you can, you can't see it but it's got the same color that's sewn to attach it to the top of this cone. So this ice cream scoop is exact identical to this one here. You just can't see the top of it completely. And then this scoop of ice cream here is sewn right at this particular line. So it's a really not a bad pattern. What I realized here is that the scallops are what scared me the most I have to say. And when we get to the scoop area, we're going to be doing one side of the scoop, the left side first, and then we're going to be doing the right hand side next, and then we're gonna fill in the spots in between, but they're all very similar to each other. The only difference is that one scoops on the outsides have more of a rotation of going around versus the scallops that are in the center, just like so where they just drape down. And I'm gonna show you tips and being able to identify where to put those in your pattern as well. 
So here we have the pattern and it's a four page pattern. There's a lot of words but really when you break it down step by step it's really not a big deal. Here's what the balls of yarn. You should know that the sea foam and the baby pink yarn are smaller versions of the regular Bernat baby yarn. So it's only 100 gram size balls. There's six balls of that so they're not the six balls of the massive size. We also have baby sand and when you see the baby sand up by itself you think it's more gray but as soon as you put the other two colors it looks more cone shape. It's actually a cone um, a shade. So what we have here is then we have lots of words uh, going into the pattern and then the advantage to this particular pattern is that there's on the page four that there is diagram keys just like so to be able to do the starting of the cone. I'm gonna be explaining that as well and then we have the diagram then to do the scoop of ice cream which is quite, uh, quite easy to do as well. So let's move along and um, let's uh, decipher the pattern a little bit more. Let me show you a diagram before we get started. So when we get started on this pattern we're going to be starting from the bottom of the cone working our way to just underneath here before we finish off the cone and then we start our scoops of ice cream. So what you're gonna notice here that there's a diagram key. I blew this up just for tutorial reasons but there's a repeat of rows number two to seven when you go to do this. So you're gonna start off do row number one and then you'll do all the way to seven and then you gotta repeat it again. So I really when I looked at it here is that you have rows one through seven then you repeated two through seven then two through seven and then two through six and what I put is one two three four five six seven because I can check it off as I go and do this pattern on my own. So what you will notice here is that the waffle cone is actually growing in increments and when you look at it this this layer here if you look at it from the vertical perspective just like you see here. You see where the next one starts? It starts another vertical perspective right there and then you go to repeat it starts another vertical and then you repeat it again it starts another vertical. So these verticals start in a repetitive motion as you're gonna go. So it's actually happening right in the very last section uh, when you go to do this. So what we want to do is that when we go to start this it's gonna be quite easy to be able to maintain that and you're looking to keeping all of the waffle looking the same. So let's turn our direction back to the diagram. So we have the verticals. So what I did is that I used a fuchsia highlighter and I highlighted all, of, all the, the fuchsia ones that are in the vertical just like you see here. The other ones, what are those? Those are front post double crochets but those are actually on the opposite side of your work which creates the indentation of the waffle appearance. So what you want to do is that when you're going across you're going to be putting in these front post double crochets which gives you the front look of this but on the other side when you go to turn it you're gonna be going on the front post double crochet on the back side which pulls it backward to make it look like it's square. The other thing advantage of this particular pattern which I thought was really easy is that I loved how that it's every other row that we have an increase. So it's not every row that we have an increasement going on so it's a nice tapered cone just like this. So whenever you're looking at the front side of the project where you can see the waffle itself you're going to be doing an increase on the side so consider that and whenever you got it in the reverse and looking at the back side of this cone it's just maintaining what's already there and when you can remember that it makes it so much easier to crochet this because you only really have to worry about when you're looking at it that you have to compensate for the increase. So once we repeat row one or do one through seven then repeat two through seven, repeat two through seven, then two through six. Two through six then takes you right to the top and then the next one from that point is going to be all um, a great look here and then we're just gonna do half double crochets going up. So this here is what it looks like on the very top here. So this is number six. See this is number six and so then the next one here is just front post double crochet which gives you a beautiful line right underneath the cone for a three dimensional look and then the rest of it we're gonna do one increasing round or row back on the edges only and then everything from this point forward is gonna go it just half double crochets back and forth. So from this layer here it all goes 11 inches. So once you get to here you just continue to repeat this row right here up until this whole section becomes 11 inches and then you fasten off and then your cone is done. So let's turn our direction back to the very start and let's grab our hook and let's get going. Okay so do you think you got it? Let's start the cone first. It starts from the bottom and works its way up to the top edge of the first ice cream scoop. You need to make two as there's two panels sewn together. So let's begin to crochet using an eight millimeter size L crochet hook or just use the gauge in order to do that just in case you have tighter or looser tension and let's create a slip knot to start. So the very bottom row is the very bottom of the cone and what we're going to do is that we're gonna chain 29. 
So we're gonna have to make two cones. So this is just one of them. So one, two, three, four, and five. Please go all the way to 29 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. Okay, my starting chain is done. So I got 29 on here. It's a small chain because it's the bottom of the cone. And we're going to then go fourth chain from the hook. So just look underneath the hook. So there's one, two, three, and four. Turn it over and get the back loop of the stitch and just double crochet. And I want you to double crochet in the back loop in your chain all the way across. Okay, so just move to the next one. Once you do the first one, all of them stay turned over, the chain stays turned over. So the back loop should be the very next thing you see when you look across your chain. So double crochet all the way back across your chain. So I've double crocheted myself across my chain. So it's a small little thing right now and I want to take you back to the pattern because this is row number one. We'll never repeat this ever again and I wanna show you the repeat patterns from two to seven which you'll have to continue to repeat when you're working on this cone. Let me take you back to the chart now. So here's the chart. We've just finished doing row number one and row number one we were doing the double crochet all the way across. Now we're gonna start doing the repeat which is two through seven. I'm only gonna show it to you once on camera and then you're gonna come back and repeat it again and then repeat it again and then just repeat it one more time but stop at number six. Don't finish it all the way to seven on the final time. So you can just take a mental note of this. Just write it down in your pattern. So repeat it. So we're gonna do it once. Gonna repeat it twice, three times and the third time that you're going to repeat is that you're gonna stop at number six. So what we're gonna do in number two, we're gonna start establishing that they're doing the front post double crochets which are the waffle shape itself. So this is gonna be the front side of the project. You're gonna notice we're gonna do an increase right away and then we're gonna do an increase on the back side or at the end of the other side. We're then gonna turn our work and we're gonna do front post double crochet on the other side which is the other two in here. This creates the deep pocket look for the waffle and you notice that there's no increases in number three and then number four we're gonna pick it back up and we're gonna increase again on the outside and we're gonna maintain this waffle stuff just goes right straight up from each other. So you're on the front side again. Do you see that? And then you're just gonna continue to repeat. So the difference between this uh, number seven and all the rest of the rows is that the number seven then see how it shifts over one. So this is going to be the step up to go to the next part of the section in order to gain your waffle cone. So it's gonna give you another vertical right at this point which you're gonna then come back here and maintain what you've already started here. So let's uh, begin row number two. So in row number two we're going to chain up three right away. So one two and three into the same stitch right underneath. This is gonna cause an increase. You're going to double crochet. So now you got two on the outside so there's your in increase. So the very next one is a front post double crochet. So it's the second one in. Okay so you have to go around the post. So just wrap the hook going around the post in to the side. Pull through, pull through two and two and that'll cause that that stitch to lift. So that counts as the stitch that's technically in behind it that you just oh, went in front of and then you move to the next one. Okay, so there's the next one there and you are gonna place two double crochets in a row. So one and two. So here comes the next vertical line in the waffle. So okay, so you got these two, they match. Here's your next one right here. So just wrap the hook going into the side, front post double crochet. Okay, you skip that same one that's in behind, move to the next two and that's gonna be your, your two double crochets as normal. So you wanna repeat all the way across that particular motion. Let me show you again. So you're gonna, here's your two, here's the third one right there. That is your front post double crochet. Okay, and then you come into the next two and that's just gonna be your regular double crochet. Please do that all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of this row and that's kind of what it looks like right now. So you're starting to build your waffle look now. So I'm coming up to near the end. I got four stitches left as you can see. So I'm gonna uh, just double crochet in the next two because I just did the front post double crochet. So the one right before the end, this is a front post double crochet on this side. And to honor the increase which is on this one, the final turning chain has two double crochets right into the turning chain itself. Don't go into a gapping space or you'll end up with a hole in the, what appears to be the side of your cone. So you have what appears to be everything just like this. Okay, so let's uh, move on to doing row number three. 
So let's turn our work. So this is the back side. This is what the back side is going to look like. It's very different from the front side. So it's very obvious. So you're never going to get that confused. So when you're ever you're doing the back side of this uh, particular waffle stitch, you're never increasing on the edge and that makes it very easy to remember. So you're going to chain up three. That counts as a double crochet and the first two are going to be one double crochet each for number three. Just like that. Now here it looks like it's odd doesn't it? But this uh, these two here have to be a front post double crochet. See how they're kind of lifting towards you anyway? So it's easy to identify those and you want to make those into your front post double crochet this time around. Okay? So the next one here is your front post double crochet from before if you look at it. See it's it's the row of the vertical. So if you look at it from this side it looks like it's sunken in and that makes sense and this one is just going to be a regular double crochet. Okay and the next two see that's the hole in the waffle. So this is going to be front post double crochet for two of these. See and the next one is the waffle line in the front side. So that's just going to be regular double crochet. Do you get that? So when I turn it around you can see you've just created a waffle look. So just continue to maintain that as you go across. So if it looks like it's part of the back side it is the back side it's just front post double crochets. The one in the middle that looks like it's sunken in that's the vertical side. So that's just a regular double crochet. Please maintain that all the way across for row number three. And this is what it looks like so far. So when you get to the other side I've already done the first double crochet in and because we're looking at the back side there's no increasing. So you're just matching what you see including one into the turning chain. Remember don't go into a gap go right into the chain itself. And then that concludes that round which is round number three. So let's turn it around. This is what it looks like now on the front side. Let's move on to round number four which is looking at the front side. So that means there's got to be an increase going on. So let's begin that one. When we're looking at row number four because we have been doing it out outward increase on here. This means that this is further away from where we were over here. So what we're going to do in round number four, row number four, we're going to chain up three, one, two, three. We're doing an increase so come right into the same stitch for a double crochet. So there's your increase on the edge and in row number four the next one is just a regular double crochet. And let's begin the repeat pattern then. Okay. So before we just had an increase only and then we jumped into the front post double crochet because we're further out this time it's an increase and then there's one standing by itself. So the next one here to maintain that vertical line that goes up it's going to be a front post double crochet and the other ones are part of the waffle in behind and that's just going to be a double crochet each and there will be two of those. So it's very easy to maintain the front of this. So here's your next vertical lift. You can just look down and see it that it is and that's a front post double crochet. The next two are part of the whole of the waffle and that's just going to be one double crochet each. So nothing fancy there to keep that looking in behind. And the next ones are front post. So the repeat pattern when we get to there there's a total of four of the or sorry three of these pocket squares before it starts to increase again as we do the next set of increases as we go in doing the repeat patterns as well. So maintain this going all across for row number four. Coming up to the end of row number four which just a few seconds ago I left you. It doesn't take long this cone. I was actually really surprised by it. So I'm maintaining what I'm seeing. Here is the last front post double crochet before we get to the end. So there should be two stitches left. So the next one is just a double, double crochet and the final one is going to be two into this one to maintain that increase because we're looking at the front side of the project and this was row number four like so. So you can see these lines are starting to work themselves up into the vertical. Let's move along to row number five. So turning to row number five we turn our work we're looking at the back side once again. So we're not increasing because we're looking at the back side. So we maintain what's already there. So we're going to chain up three and what we want to watch for is these shapes right here. Okay so don't worry about the edge at this point. Okay you don't worry about that you're looking at these things that are popping out. That's what you want to maintain at this point. We're not ready to do an increase of these waffles until we get to the next repeat when we come back to do that. So what we're going to do is that uh, chain three in the beginning and the next three are just double crochets as normal. And I can see that here on the pattern but I, you can also read it too. And this one here is part of 
the actual um, front post double crochet. So it's gonna be another one that's double crochet. So there's an actual fact there's four of them right on the edge. Now you're gonna start doing this fancy work. So it's gonna be front post double crochet for two in a row. Just maintains the pocket and then the next one is a front post double crochet on the other side. That's just a regular double crochet when it comes to this side. Okay, so here's the next two. Those are front post double crochets each. And then the next one is just a regular double crochet. So let's turn it over and see what it looks like. This is row number five. So you can see another square has just been finished off and we're making a halfway through another one. So maintain this going all the way across. Let's see at the end of this row for row number five. So I'm coming up to the end of row number five and maintaining exactly what I see. So remember the first time we had four that sat by themselves on this side right here. So that means that there's gonna be four that sit by themselves and I can see all four here. And those are just one double crochet each. Because we're looking at the back side there is no increase which makes this a very easy pattern to follow. So it's kind of a, I like how the increments are easy to understand when it comes to this. So this is one of my pleasant surprises. So that concludes off round number five, uh, row number five and that's what it looks like now. So you got another set of waffles to come in. So there's, as I said, there's three boxes of waffles before we do an increase of doing um, a repeat pattern. So let's begin to do round number, or row number six. Okay, row number six we're going to begin and we're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and into the very same one we're doing an increase because we're looking at the front side and that's what we have. So the next two are gonna be one double crochet each and then you can see that you can see the front post double crochet next. See, so follow this line up and this is the next one. If you can see those visual cues it makes it so much easier. So then the next two are just double crochets as normal. And then th that means that the next one has to be that front post double crochet but you can see that it clearly is anyway. So maintain that going all the way for row number six. When you're doing the repeat pattern the very first last time you do this, this is the row that you'll finish on on the very final of once you get all your repeats done. So uh, just be paying attention to this row here. So let's uh, get to the end of this row. Let me show you what to do for row number seven. Coming up to the end of row number six and the very final here. There's three stitches here but remember the first two are just regular double crochets and then the final because we're looking at the front side must be an increase so there's gonna be two into that turning chain. So that would be the end of repeating a row number six. So you have to pay attention to this because it's when you turn it around is what creates these lines that go across. And so when you're finishing this one at the very end when you have to repeat the very final repeat of two through six because the next row is um, critical it's what gives that beautiful line at the top of the ice cream cone before it goes to the flat edge. Let's turn and work and go for row number seven. So in row number seven this is when we start looking at the pattern a little bit more differently and this is when we start in doing the increase and let me bring back the pattern and let me show you what I'm talking about. So row number seven is when you get this next line that appears here and this is when the waffle looks like it's increasing one box over. So when you looked at it here you got the vertical line that's going up that we can see. So this number seven creates the next one that becomes the next one like so and then it comes again and again. Do you see that? So row number seven is the one that actually makes the increase of giving you an extra waffle box and just uh, be paying attention to that. Let's uh, move on and let me show you. So in row number seven we're going to do an, uh, a chaining of three which counts as a double crochet and the next one is just going to be a regular double crochet. So here's what we're going to do. The next two will be your waffle box. Okay, so this next two will be front post double crochet. This is creating a new box formation on the front side and then the next one is your front post double crochet on the other side and I'm gonna turn it around in just a sec. So that's just a regular double crochet and the next two are front post double crochets once again. Let me turn it around and show you what happened on the other side as a result of this. So do you see this? So you were increasing and then all of a sudden on round number seven you created an additional waffle box that was not there before. Okay, do you get that? So you're just gonna maintain what you already know and just going across so that's a double crochet. Here's your ones that are appearing in front of you which is the maintaining of your, your waffle box which is front post double crochet and just maintain all the way across and I'll meet you on the other side and where I'll show you how to do the other side because that's gonna be increasing one by one box as well. 
So I've come to the other side so I'm just gonna double crochet where I can see the front post double crochet on the other side and look at here. So the next two are gonna be front post double crochets. Those are gonna create a new waffle box on this side and then the final two stitches are just one double crochet each. And that concluded off row number seven. So when I turn it around on this side of the box, on this side here, you will see a brand new box just formed up here. So this is giving you like a stepping increment of the waffle cone. Let me bring back the pattern and show you what to do next because now you just gotta go back to row number two through seven, two through seven, and then two through six. And let's begin. And I'm gonna show you the diagram once again. So now that we've completed one through seven, we need to repeat again through two through seven, then again two through seven, and then again two through six only. So now that we're here, we have to go back to number two once again. And so we just have to pay attention to this. The only difference that you see here is that we're wider up here, but it's still the same repeat pattern. And I'm gonna start you off, and then I'm gonna leave the rest of the cone for you in order for you to do the repeats, and then I'll take you to the next part of the cone. So let me show you how to get started just to make sure you're clear, you're clear on that and then you can begin the rest of the cone on your own and I'll meet you at the flat edge at the top of the cone. So let's begin row number two once again. The only difference is that I'm wider so before I was down over here now I'm over here. Same thing. So you're gonna chain up three, one, two, and three. Same stitch you're going to put in an increase. You're looking at the front side and just like you did on number two the next one was a front post double crochet. And that makes complete sense because look at the next two. They're sunken in. That is your waffle box right there and you're gonna put in one double crochet in each. And now you're just gonna maintain what, exactly what you see. So there's a front post double crochet so maintain that. And the next uh, two in a row are just double crochets each. Okay so that's how you have to do when you're doing that. So you're just a little bit wider and so then you go from row, row three, four, five, six, and seven. Repeat that all again and then you're gonna repeat again from two through six. So uh, continue to do this. I'll see you at the end and let me just uh, show you where you're gonna meet me and I will be right back. So at this point I'm abandoning you here on the repeat of starting number two and then what you want to do then is that I want you to repeat from two through seven two through seven and then two through six and I'm gonna meet you right here and then we're gonna take a next step further into showing you how to finish off your cone from that point. So it's just a matter of just reversing the video if you need help back to number two go through to seven again two through seven and then two through six and then I'll see you back here. So get that done and I'll see you in a moment. So last time I left you I was down here and I did my repeats two through seven, two through seven, and then two through six. And so now I'm currently over here and I'm currently ready to move on into the next part of the process. Let me take you back to the diagram and let me show you where we are and what we're gonna do next. So now that I have my repeats done I've finished off a number six because that's where it told me to and now instead of doing number seven for the final we're gonna start and move up here. So this first row is showing you what row number six look like but we're going to move up and this is the new row seven for the final to do it this time. So we're just gonna do front post double crochet all the way across and this is gonna create a line right underneath the cone and then the next row we're gonna do an increase of three in the, in the ends and then everything else from this point forward up until this spot to 11 inches equals um, the rest of the cone that is hidden behind the ice cream scoop. Let me take you back to the picture one more time and let me show you once again. So I'm back on the photo so number seven, the new number seven is this line that goes all the way across. We're gonna expand one time and then we're going to then do half double crochets going all the way up and then it stops underneath this um, particular ice cream scoop right here and we're gonna sew it then along the side here. But once we get to the 11 inches from this spot to up here underneath somewhere that's it we're done this. So this a particular cone does not go any higher in behind the scenes. So let's turn our work and move up. So what we want to do is that I'm gonna be now in the back and this is the new number seven that we're going to do this time around. So I was really surprised by the way but I got this done so quickly versus the first time I did it. I think it's because once you understand a pattern it becomes really quite easy. So this whole row going across is just chain three on the end and then we're in each one of the posts it's a front post double crochet. This is going to create that solid line 
that is going to be all the way across. So every one is gonna be a front post double crochet. So please do that and I'll see you back here at the end of this row. So front post double crochet. So I'm coming up to the end of this row where I'm doing front post double crochet all the way across. On the other side when I turn it around you're gonna see that a nice solid line appeared and you just wanna go into every stitch and on the last one you are just going to um, when you go to look at it you're just gonna do around the outside of the, po of the post. Okay so just go right around the outside of that post for the last one front post double crochet. So when you go to turn it around you see you have a beautiful line that is the top lip of your cone. Let's say I begin the second row and then we're gonna begin the repeat rows to get you all the way to 11 inches. Let's begin to do that next. Okay before moving on what I want you to do is that I want you to put a stitch marker right in this post. Now it says to you to mark this post and then it's 11 inches from this post to the top of the cone. So you want to measure it here so just so that you have it here and then it's just a lot easier to be able to measure up to. Let's begin the next row. Next row we're going to chain two and it counts as a half double crochet in this particular case and you're gonna half double crochet two more times into the same first one like that. Now all you're just gonna do all the way across is that you're going to put in a half double crochet into each stitch all the way except for the very last one you're gonna put in three and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way across and this is the only row that you're going to be doing the expansion on. So the very final one you're gonna put in three half double crochets. So for all rows now going forward we have to just get to 11 inches and it's from the row below as we marked it on the other side. So it's from this row here and we need to get 11 inches high. So remember just to turn your work the first one counts as a half double crochet so you chain up two and then just move to the next one and just half double crochet into the next. So you're just gonna go back and forth and half double crochet into each stitch going back and forth until it reaches to 11 inches. So I'll see you at the end of that and um, I just wanna take you to the picture one more time just to explain again where we are and what you need to do next. So just as a reminder I'm leaving you about here and then you need to get for 11 inches from here all the way up to here at some point. So take your measuring tape and just measure up and then when you get your 11 inches we're gonna fasten off and we're completely done the cone. Then you just gotta do a secondary cone which will be the back side of your project and then you're ready for the scoops next. So I'll see you back here when we're gonna finish off one of these cones. So now I'm back I have my 11 inches done and I have to do a second cone so I have two of my cones now ready to go and I'm ready to move on. So what we have here is two amazing looking cones just like you see here and now I'm ready to move on in this project. So let's move to the next chapter and we're gonna do ice cream scoops next. Good job. So let's do a scoop of ice cream together. There's one big scoop and five scallops that make up one scoop of ice cream. It's easy to do if you go step by step and make sure you watch for the tips of the stitch markers to speed your way through. Remember you need to do four scoops of ice cream so you can choose the flavors that you love. The next part we're going to work on the ice cream scoops. Both the top and the bottom are identical in scoops so you have to make four scoops of ice cream in order to make it work. So what you're gonna see here is that in the blue here they've used a blue strand here and they've sewn it into the top of the pink just like this. Okay so it's just slightly overlapping. So when you're going to do this for your child what's going to happen is that you're going to sew along the base here using the, uh, the same color. Then you're going to use this color and sew exactly where you see on the outside here and then you're going to sew then just this area here and leave the rest open that the child can slip into. You'll do the same on both sides. So what you're going to see here is that the cone will stop just behind this line here and then the scoop of ice cream picks up and then the other one they're just overlaying on onto each other. So let me talk a little bit about this because this is what scared me the most I think when I looked at this pattern for the first time and realized that I don't really have anything to be afraid of. So let's break down the ice cream scoops into shapes. So what we're gonna have is that we're gonna have a half circle. Very, very, very easy. I have to say I cannot even believe how easy that was. And then what we're gonna do then we're gonna do the left side first. So we're gonna do the scoop here. Then we're gonna come and do the right and then we're gonna finish it off. What I'm gonna show you today is that I did stitch markers. And what you're gonna see here when I go to show you the pattern is that the stitch markers are you noticing they're not in the center of the scoop? 
Well that's because they're not supposed to be but this is where you're to start. So that when you reach over that the starting then is right as a half moon shape like this. And when you do this you're gonna find that these scoops completely align with each other in order to be perfectly balanced for the way that you see it. Let's go look at the diagram and let's start going in that and let's begin. So here's the diagram and of course I used my highlighters. I made some notes for myself when I'm going to teach it. And what I did is that I highlighted every time that there's an increase. The advantage to this particular project is that every time you go to start a row it always just is a regular double crochet and then it has double crochets in front of it and then it's an increase. And then these are the same. So for example you see here number five is that there's one, two, three and then an increase. One, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase. They're all like that and that's what makes it really quite easy. So when you go and follow, let's follow number five. You follow and come over. When you go to number six this time there's gonna be th four. So five there was one, two, three, one, two, three and in the next one in row number six there was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four in between all of the increases and as you move up what's gonna happen is that it's gonna increase. So round number seven or, or row number seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Round number eight is gonna be six. Round number seven is gonna be seven and as long as you can remember that it's so easy to do this half of uh, circles. I've never seen anything more easier than this. So this is actually gonna whip up real quick to do the half circle and then we're gonna come and do the scallops. So here's my thing for you. This doesn't take a lot of brain power. What it does is it takes steps and so if you can just look at this as one step then we look at one side as one step one the other is another step and then you look at your three scallops in the middle. They're all just steps and when you just work through it incrementally it doesn't take that long but it's just a little more detailed than just being able to whip it up real quick. The advantage to the outside scallops here that you see here they're almost identical to these. The only difference is that the scallop doesn't go flat it goes right up into the next section up here. So it goes wraps around and it does not the same on the other side but the stitch work in between there's only three rows that you see in each scallop including the outside and because that they're all the same stitch work that is required it makes it so easy to remember this particular pattern. So let's start making the half circle now and I'm gonna be using a sea foam. I, it, in behind the scenes what I did is that I crocheted the three of the scoops and now the fourth one is gonna be here on camera so that I understood the pattern and then once we get that done then we're gonna start the assembly. So let's begin doing the scoop of ice cream. So using the same size hook an eight millimeter size L or whatever one you choose if you had a different gauge you're gonna create a slip knot. And because it's a half circle remember that it's always an odd number that when you begin to do half circles like this. So we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four. This is going to be one of the double crochets that is in the circle. It's actually gonna be like lying on its side. Going to the very beginning one I want you to double crochet into that same beginning one a total of six times. So it's got one and two, three, this is four, five and six. So I told you already that you had to have an odd number. The odd number is the first one that you started with right here. So if you look at the number of posts, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, you see that it's an odd number. So there's your half moon right in the very beginning. And let's move on to row or row number two. Okay, let's turn our work and go for row number two. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna do an increase in every stitch going up. So you're gonna chain up three, which counts as your double crochet, into the same one, you're gonna apply another double crochet. So every stitch across is going to be two double crochets into each. So you got one and two. So here this one here is um, basically the incrementing starting on this one here and then as we move up in the next row you're gonna see that we're gonna put uh, one double crochet sitting by themselves uh, in order to space out these um, the increments in order to have your ice cream scoop sit flat and your ice cream uh, scoop should sit flat. So you're just applying two double crochets into each stitch going across. And remember the very final one that you do is in the turning chain. So don't go into a space, go right into a chain itself. 
and you're gonna apply two into that one as well. So there should be seven groups of two if you wanna be very technical about it. So let's just check to make sure we're on the right track. So we've got one group of two, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's move on to row number three. So row number three is what I talked about in the very beginning of this particular chapter is that there's going to be, every time you start now, there, there's gonna be double crochets that sit by themselves before we do an increase. That's gonna be true of every round now going forward. So we're gonna chain up three. So that's gonna count as one double crochet sitting by itself and the very next stitch that is in the next one here is gonna have two. So in row number three, the repeat pattern for this one is that the next one is gonna be by itself. So it's just one by itself and the next one will have two into the same one. So I want you to do that all the way for row number three. So one by itself, two into the next. So I'm coming up all the way and I'm maintaining the pattern of just one by itself and then two of the next. The last stitch in order to stay balanced in this particular project will always be the one with two in the very end. So it, it's just a matter of starting out and that just makes a lot of sense to me because when you start off and put one by itself and then you go into two and then one and two, one and two, the very last one should always have two and it should be in the turning chain as well. Let's move along to row number four. So row number four, we're gonna turn our work. So we're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and this time the next one will be one double crochet by itself. So this time there's gonna be two double crochets that are by themselves and then the next one will have two into the same one. So the repeat pattern for row number four is that you're gonna have two double crochets by itself. So one and two and then the next one will have two double crochets into the same one. Please do that all the way across. So I'm coming up to the end of row number four. I have three stitches left and I just put in two into the same one here to keep it in balance with the pattern. So the next two are by themselves. So one and two and the very last one should have two double crochets right into the turning chain itself. You're gonna notice that there's gonna be a space that looks kind of open. That's just a natural thing on crochet. So if you see that don't be panicking about that. It's part of the stitch work. Let's uh, turn our work and go for row number five. Row number five is that we're gonna provide more double crochets in a row. So we're gonna chain up three, one, two, and three. And this time there will be another double crochet into the next one and another double crochet into the next one. So you have three double crochets that are by themselves this time around. Then it's gonna be two. So the repeat pattern for row number five is at three by themselves and two into the next. Please move on and do this row. So I'm coming up to the end of row number five and basically I have two in the same one here and the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then the very final turning chain will have two into the same one and that's keeping in count with the pattern. So let's turn our work and move up to row number five, or row number six. Turn it and let's begin. So in row number six what's gonna happen? We're gonna chain up three and now this time there's gonna be four double crochets that sit by themselves. Do you get the pattern? It's pretty easy, right? So you got one, two, and three and that three plus the one that you started with the chain is your four so the next one must be two into the same one. So for row number six all it is is four by itself and then two into the next. Please do that all the way across. I'm finishing up round or row number six and there this time there's four that sit by themselves as I just said and so then I'm keeping in true to the pattern and once I get the final set done here that there's two into the same one then all I can just really do is just kind of put single cro or double crochets up until the very last one and then just put two into the last one because I can count on my stitches to be the right count. Let's turn to work and go for row number seven. So row number seven, last time there was four double crochets that sat by themselves before you put in two and then this time what's gonna happen is that you were going to put in a total of, what is that? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be five. So if you can just think about increments, one, two, three and then there's gonna be five double crochets. So if you include that chaining at three is one of them so this is technically the third one, four, and five like that and then the next one has two. 
Okay, so there's gonna be five in a row this time and please and then two and then continue that. Okay, so five by itself and then two into the next. Five by itself, two the next. I'll see you at the end of this row. Coming up to the end of row number seven, there's two into the same one and I'm keeping in balance. Remember that there's five double crochets that sit by themselves. So one, two and I got three, four and five. So there's five by itself and the last one is gonna be two into the same one. Okay, so let's uh, move up to round, or row number eight. I keep saying round because it's a semicircle. So let's turn up row number eight. So last time it was five by itself. This time it's gonna be six. So cha uh, chain up three which counts as one of them and then you're gonna double crochet into the next five of them. So one, two, three, this is four and five. Okay, so that with the chaining three counts as one of them. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the next one it's got two into the same one. So this time for this round or row, it is going to be um, six by itself, two into the next. Six by itself, two into the next. Please do that all the way across. So I'm coming up to the end of this one. There was six by themselves as we talked about and then the last one's got two into the same. By the way, just so you're aware, I haven't actually said this, but the final round has 10 by itself and then two. So you know that we're getting close, closer to the end of this. So let's uh, begin to do the next row. So if there were six by themselves last time, this time that means it has to be seven by themselves as we move up. So this is uh, uh, row number nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This is row number nine. So let's chain up three. So there's gotta be seven by itself. So this is two. I counting in a chain three is one of them. This is a three, four, five, and six, and seven. So seven by themselves and then two into the next. So this is this round. This is round number nine and continue to do that. So seven by itself, two into the next. Seven by itself, two into the next. See at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of this. There was seven by itself and the very final one should have two into there if you're keeping the same balance of count. Okay, so that was seven by itself. So let's turn our work and let's go for the next row. So this time there's going to be a total of eight by itself. So let's do the chain three. So that's one of the eight. So let's just start counting. So we're gonna do the next one. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's eight by itself and the next one has two into the same one. So please do that same thing all the way across. So eight by itself and then two into the next and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm finishing up this one. There was eight by itself this time. So the, and in actual fact if you're following along you only have two more rows after this as well. So I'm just uh, just going along doing my eight by itself and the very final stitch will have two into the same one. These scoops were a lot easier than I ever expected them to be. I thought they were gonna be a lot more complicated than they are. So there's gonna be two into the very final. Make sure you go into a chain and not to a space because then the chain will look better turn up or turn it around and let's go for the next round. So the next one as I promised and this is gonna be nine by itself. So I'm not gonna show you because you pretty well got it. So just chain up three and then the next eight are gonna be by itself. This one with the chain three counts as the ninth. Then two into the next and then nine by itself, two into the next, nine by itself to the next. Please do that all the way across. So I'm just finishing up the row that has nine in by itself and then the final is gonna have the two. We have one more row to go after this and this is it. This is how hard these tops, the scoops get and then we're gonna move along and I'm gonna show you some tips and more to do the scalloping, um, you know, the blotches of ice cream. That is kind of uh, really cool. So the very final one is gonna have two in order to keep it in balance. I'm not really counting because I'm trusting in my stitch counts to be accurate. Turn to work, let's do the final uh, row together. So the final will just be very easy. It's gonna chain up three and the next nine will be by itself and with that chaining three that gives you a total of ten. So you'll have ten by itself, two, ten, two, ten, two. Please do that all the way across. 
So I'm coming up to the conclusion of the scoop that's on top before we're gonna start the scallop but you know one thing that I did when I was doing this is that I didn't realize that there's a actual row that goes across the bottom of the scoop like so. So we're gonna be doing that next after this and do not fasten off at this point. I want to do two things while I'm here and then I'm just putting my 10 in a row and then the last will be two double crochets right at the end like I'm supposed to be doing. But I wanted to make some notes because we need to start thinking about ahead on what we need to do in order to have the right balance of the scallops that are uh, the ice cream scallops. So the last one is gonna have two into the very end to maintain that. Do not fasten off at this point. Uh, let me explain some things and I you need an extra pair uh, spare pair, uh, piece of yarn at this moment. I need you to mark what is the right side of this project which is the current side that you can currently see. So I need you to mark that before you do anything. So let me get that and I'll be right back. So as I promised I need to mark what side is the right side which is this side that we're currently looking at. I need you to mark it right now because when you go to finish this off you're, you're gonna get confused or you could on what is the right side and what's the wrong side. This is the right side that you're looking at right now. So just mark it on this side and when you place this stitch marker place it so that you cannot see it on this side. Okay so this indicates to me that I'm looking at the right side of the project. So we're gonna turn around and we're gonna go across the bottom of the scoop and I wanna show you what's gonna happen with that because I can show you some real quick tricks with that. So we're back at the diagram and one thing I kind of overlooked when I did this the very first time is that my first run through is that I didn't realize that there's actually double crochets that are along the bottom of the scoop just like this. So let's turn the scoop over. So what we're gonna do is that we are going to chain up three which counts as a double crochet and then we are going to put in these double crochets all the way across. Is it random? Absolutely not. We need to keep this stitch count absolutely accurate because all of these scallops rest in the certain number and you can see that there's a red dot here. These are stitch markers. Let me pull up one that I have done where I've left in my stitch markers and I wanna show you that and when you see it from this perspective it'll make a lot of sense. So before I started doing the scallop area I marked all of these stitches with a stitch marker first. They are marked right in this double crochet line that I'm about to do and I have counted over and this is where we go to start a scallop. So we start here so we attach here and then we double crochet ourselves to make the semicircle. So they're all like that. So if I knew like for example here's the center point of this scallop or of this here if this was actually in the center what's gonna happen is if I started there the scallop will be out to the side. So I have to be paying attention to this and these are what these red dots are on the particular pattern. So let me remove that and take you back to the pattern. So you see that there's red dots. Those are the stitch markers that we're gonna place after we do this line. Now because these scallops are equally spaced we have to pay attention to this number. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna show you a quick trick. There's a total count of 53 double crochets that are along this line all the way to the other side. Here's the trick. You need to get to a certain number and what I figured out is that you have to have 26 double crochets on one side and then 26 on the other side and with one right in the middle. That gives you your 53. But here's the thing. When you're going along the side I figured out that if you go into a side right in the top and then the next one is right into the middle and then to the top. What's gonna happen is if you do that all the way across you're not gonna have enough. So what I noticed here in the very middle is that the very one before you hit the center is gonna have two double crochets right in to the side here. But when you look back over here you'll notice that these look a little bit of out, out of alignment. So what happens you can do and I'll, and I'll take you all the way through is that you're going to start up and you're just gonna do the end middle, end middle, end middle. At some point here you have to put in two double crochets right into the side post like you see here and that'll bring you back to 26 for your count. So you just have to throw one in there and right when you see it right here, it's probably right around here you can almost see it, is that's where you need to put it in. So what you have to do is that you have to make sure you count to 26 before you get to this spot because the next one is gonna be one by itself and then 26 on the other. So just like you see here that there's two into this one here. At some point over here you're gonna have to make sure you put in two into the side of a post in order to keep it in balance to make it your 53. So that's what our goal is. Let me show you how to do that. 
So let's begin. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet. So that's one of your 26 that you need to do. So the next one is gonna go right into the side of a post. Okay, that'll be number two. The next one is gonna be right where they're joining. Okay, this is the like in between the rows. So that is gonna be three. Next one is the side of a post. Four. Okay, next one is the, the middle between this is five and then post and so on. So at some point I need to make sure that I am going to throw in an extra one on the posts. Now I'm getting closer to the middle at this point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna throw it in here. So I've got into the in between and this next post I'm gonna put in two double crochets into the same one. It's the only place I'm gonna do it other than the very middle. So let's count where we are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and let's keep counting. So this is 12 so I'm just going in between 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, let's see where we are. 22, post, 23, the middle, 24. And look at that. This is the last post. See, and this will be 25 and 26. So I nailed it. Okay, did you get that? Isn't that easy? So, you, so you're gonna do the very middle one. That doesn't count as anything. Just leave it by itself so it's one by itself. And then you're gonna do 26 along this side. So the first one, the post is gonna have two in there as per the diagram. And that makes it nice and closed in at the very middle. And then you're just gonna work into the middle and the post as you go across. Oh, make sure it's all double crochet. So let's start counting those out. So don't count the middle one. So one, two, three, and four, and then five, and then six, seven, and eight, and then nine, and I'm gonna throw two into the next one. So it'll be 10 and 11. So there's two into that one and then 13, 14, this is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and then 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and look at that. And the 26th one will be right in the top of the chain. Okay? And I wanna double count that because if you're wrong at this point the scoop um, will not be balanced. So let's just count that. I don't count the first one. So the one that's in the center. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Oh, I have to have 26. Okay, so let me just slam in an extra one right at the end. So I had 25. So I'm gonna go on the side of the post. And then the last one is the top of the chain three. It is so important that you have these counts. So let me just verify. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Let's go to the other side. Don't count the middle one. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So that's good. 
Now I'm gonna fasten off at this point and I want you to fasten off and then we need three stitch markers in order to continue. So grab those, fasten off and grab your stitch markers and I'll be right back. So looking at the diagram upside down, it shows us in red dots here, here and here. These are stitch markers. We need to mark these now. You cannot go any further unless you mark these. Do you notice that they're on the other side of a scallop? Okay, so if you look at it here, the scallop goes this way. So we wanna pay attention to this because it shows you where to, to do this. Now, this is where we fastened off right here. So I want you to count and the first one is 16 stitches away. So count that first one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Mark it. Okay. The next one is going to be the 29th one. So if that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. That 29th one is where the next one is. So just get your stitch marker up and just pull it through. Now I can tell this is right because the center point of this semicircle is right here and this is off to the one side. Do you see that? So if this was directly in the middle or if this was on this side, I know that it's wrong. So let's continue along. So that was the, the 29th and the next one is at 42nd. So 29 is where we are. So 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So 42 is where the next one is. So these are where you're gonna start your scallops that are in the middle of your scoop. This will make the huge difference with your, if you mark it now to make it a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start on our first scallop. So let's turn it back upside down. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna, our back upside right I guess. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start on the left scallop first and then we're gonna jump over and do the right and then we're gonna jump over and then do the scallops in between. This is really quite easy. It's actually shocking how easy it is. Let's begin to do the left hand scallop first. So when we're looking at the scallops, the only difference between the outsides and the middle is the amount of rotation that it does. You will notice that we have a certain amount of stitches that are all in the center point. They're all the same in the middle. This one's of course because it's going around almost in a, you have the up here and then around it's like, a, what is that? It's not 180 degrees, it's the one in between 240. It's something like that. It's not a 360. So it's going par partially almost all the way around and then the other side is the same way. So what you're gonna notice here is that the left hand starts up here and works around like this and then comes back and like this. This one here on the right, we're gonna start on this side and work going up and then back and then up. Why are we doing it like that instead of being the same way? The difference is is that you gotta make sure that you're looking at the right side of the project. If you, for example, start both of them at the same point, this one scallop will appear upside down and it will not look balanced. So let's start on the left first where, and I'll show you exactly where to start and let's begin. So when you're looking at these scallops, what's gonna happen is that we come around and you're gonna slip stitch it to the top. You wanna count these double crochets over. So when we get all these done, you're gonna see that we're gonna slip stitch it. Then we're gonna slip stitch two more up and then begin a back. We slip stitch again to hold it in there, slip stitch up and then begin again. So you're gonna see all these dots, these are slip stitches as we attach it as we go. Let's move on. So we're gonna start on the left hand scallop first and we're gonna rotate around. So this is the right side of the project. I can see that because we marked it remember. And then what we're gonna do is that I want you to look at this. So we, when we did it, we double crocheted across the top but I want you to look at it from a side point of view and I want you to look at the base of this double crochet. Remember chaining three counts as double crochets. Looking at the base and that's where you're gonna attach the yarn in this case and you're going to attach it. Use a slip knot in order to fasten it, just a piece of mind. Slip that onto the hook and pull through and bring that yarn through to a join. Okay, so leave this straggler down on top. Now coming to the top of the same double crochet, I want you to place in a certain amount of, uh, of double crochets and the answer is the total of 11. So you want to go in to the top of that same double crochet and double crochet 11 times into that same space. So now that one is in, you're just gonna do another one and keep doing that. So this is two and we have three. This is gonna make it rotate around. You got four and five 
and six. It's gonna get tight in there so just be aware of that. So that was six. I wanna just do another veric uh, verification count just to make sure I'm okay. So let's just do a, a verification count so I can see. So this first one here is the one original double crochet that I was in. Okay, so then we start here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And let's do seven, eight, nine, and ten, and eleven. So there's gonna be a lot in that, just that one stitch right in the corner. So we have 11 that's going around. So you're gonna naturally see that it's gonna wanna attach to the underside of the scoop. So if you look at the pattern you can see here is that it's gonna be the third stitch in. So you got the first one here, second and third and you, that's where you're gonna slip stitch it in order to conclude that. Okay, so you've, where you joined it is partially the way up and then you went around the circle and then you just joined it here. So let's turn our work and let's move on and we're gonna do the second row. There's only three rows complete. So before we move on you wanna slip stitch two more double crochets down the line. So one and two. So I'm going along the bottom of the scoop and then I'm gonna begin. So row number two no matter which one it is even for the other scallops there's always gonna be just two into the same stitch. So one and two. So there's gonna be 11 stitches all the way around so this means that there's gonna be 11 groups of two. So if you wanna verify that it just makes sense to do that before you finish that row off. So you're just putting two into each as you make yourself around. You'll see that it will sit flat when you go to do it and I'll see at the end of this round. So there's now 11 groups of two as I go all the way around and I come back here and I can see this is where I joined it. See and I wanna see and look, skip one and go one more up on here. This is the side of the side of the scoop and just join it with a slip stitch and that just has it coming up the other side. Okay, so let's uh, turn our work and before we do that we gotta slip stitch two more times. So one and two and this moves it up slightly. This is on the side of the scoop and we're gonna turn our work. So this time round number three is identical for all of the scoops uh, and essentially we're gonna start off the first one is gonna always have two double crochets. So one and two and then the next one's gonna be by itself. And you're gonna do that all the way around on that. Okay, so there's gonna be two into the next one and then one into the next. Please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and that's the end of this particular scallop for this side of the scoop. So I'm just finishing up this side of the scallop. This is the third row. And uh, this, these were so much easier than I expected. So there's the very final one that is gonna go in and it's gonna be one by itself. Okay, so we started off with two into the same one. The end, of the end one is one by itself. And then what you need to do is there, gotta look. So this is where we're gonna attach one of the scallops. So you gotta look at it from that perspective. So I'm looking at it and I'm counting two over and then two over. And then here I'm counting two over as well and what I want to do is just secure it with a slip stitch in. So what I can do at the very end if for example you're off by a stitch you just have to just secure it into a different spot in order to fill in the spaces but I wouldn't worry about it yet. I would worry about it when you're doing the middle that's where you can fake it the most. So once you have that just secured with the slip stitch that's it. You're done. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna just trim that out and then I am going to then let me do that here. I'm going to then use my uh, darning needle at the end of this project to be able to fasten all that in. So I'm just pulling it through and leaving that out of the way. So this is the left hand side so if you turn it over this is what it looks like. So now we're gonna move over to the right. Look at the, the, the top here. This is the right side. So when we go to start the next one just turn it so that you can still see it and we're gonna work on the other side of the scoop over here. Okay so we're still looking at the right side at this moment. Let's begin the right side. So let's do the right side and I'm gonna create a slip knot and this time I want to look to the third one in. Okay so come out from the outside. So here's your flat edge, here's your scoop. So this time we're doing starting on the bottom and not the side. So the third one in and I wanna join it. 
So to do the outside just leave your straggler down. Now on the top of this chain area here I want you don't go into a space go right into a chain. I want you to double crochet 11 times to make that circle rotation once again. So that was one and we have two. It's gonna get tight. Three and this is four. We have five. We have six. I'm gonna turn my work. That was six. Okay, we have seven. Eight. Nine. And ten and eleven. Okay, so there is your eleven in, and then all you just got to do where you've done the join. Okay, that's the top of the one. Okay, so you got to look and go one and two, and that's where you're going to do your slip stitch right here. So before you move on, I want you then to uh, move up two. So just go up two. So one and two. You just slip stitching up to get yourself up there and then turn your work. So like before you're just gonna reach down into the the scallop area. The first one and all of them will have two double crochets in each. So remember what there was? There was eleven groups of two and you're gonna do that all the way around on that one. So see you back here at the end of this round and I'll see and I'll get you started on the final round which is number three. So I'm coming up all the way around and I should have 11 groups of two which is 22 stitches. So I'm just counting. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Coming here I wanna skip two stitches and go to the third one there. And then I want to move up uh, two more. So just continue to slip stitch and let's go for round number three. So round number three we're gonna turn our work and this will be the final of this scallop. And so the first one that we're gonna do just pull it apart and you can see where it starts. The first one will always have two double crochets into the same one and then the next one is one by itself. Okay so continue that same pattern. So there's two into the next and then one by itself. Please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of the scallop and there's two into this one here and the very final one in order to keep balance is one double crochet by itself. And I just wanna look to it and this is where the last one is joined so I'm moving two up and then joining it with a slip stitch and that concludes that one. So I'm gonna trim my work and I'm gonna sew that in but that's the outside scallop for number right. So now I'm going to show you only one of the scallops in the middle because they're all identical and I'm gonna show you how to use those stitch markers in order to make it work. With your project upside down just like you see it in the diagram here I want you to look to your stitch markers. You have a total of three of them and I want you to work for the one that is on the left hand side which is the one over here. Okay, it'll appear right hand in your in your thing but if you turn it upside down it'll uh, upside right it will be on the left hand side. This is where we're going to join the yarn just like you see in the red dot and you're gonna reach over to two over and start and put seven double crochets in there and then you're gonna slip stitch it to the two over from there. You're gonna slip stitch two more and then come back and do two into each slip stitch and then you're gonna slip again two more. Now the, here's the thing. When you go to do this slip stitch here you want it to be directly beside the other one that's already there. So at this point if you have screwed up in any way this is where you can ad lib and throw in and just kind of just make it look right at this point without having a frog anything. But this should actually be technically correct when you're doing all of this. So we're gonna start on this side and then you're just gonna do them in order and again this only takes a few minutes and these are really surprisingly quite quick. So let's begin at the first slip stitch or the, at the stitch marker here and we always want to look at the stitch marker and then look this way. Okay so we're looking towards putting the scallops in this way. Do you see that? And that's what we're gonna do. So let's begin. 
So let's begin to do our first one. We're gonna start off with the slip knot and let's put our hook in and I'm looking to the stitch marker. So that's where I want to join my yarn where that stitch marker is. You can pull it out after you've secured it and you can just join like that and I'm gonna leave it in just because I want to. So what I want to do is where I've joined it, I wanna look to two stitches over. Okay, so just count over two and that's where I'm gonna put my double crochets, total of seven of, the, seven of them into that same stitch. So one and two, three, four, five, six, if I could just get that six in there. It gets pretty tight. There's a lot of stitches going on into the one and number seven. So you want seven into the same one right here. So what I want to do is right where I've joined, okay, you're skipping two stitches and slip stitch in. Now before you can continue, you have to slip stitch two more over so that you're at the right spot. So slip stitch two more over and turn your work. Let's turn our work. So right where we're gonna do is the first one in is just like it was on the outsides. So it's gonna be two into each one going all the way around. But because you're only doing semicircles and not like almost full circles, these go a lot quicker. So there's only two into each. So that means that there's only seven groups of two and not eleven like it was on the outsides. So there's two into each one going across. This is the third group. And really I'm not technically counting too much. I'm just kind of filling in the spaces. So with crochet I don't try to count out as much as I, I probably should but I rely on my skills and also rely on my stitches to be accurate because when I really do need to count I gotta stay accurate. Okay so I got one more group left because I only have one more stitch left and right when you're done that, so you can see right where you've joined, you can see that's where the join is. So you move up to two more past it and that's where you just join it with the slip stitch. And now here's the thing, I got two stitches left so I want to slip stitch to the remaining and it's to two anyway and that takes me directly beside where the scallop is hanging out on the other side. Let's turn our work and just like we did before is that we have to do the final. So the final if you remember right into the outside the first one will get two double crochets and the next one will get one. So there's two into the first one, one into the next. That's easy right? So once you've done that you fasten off. So you just do that all the way across. So two into the next one, one into the next. So this is how hard this is. So it's really quite simple. It's just requiring you to do steps and I think that's what deters people when they are um, looking at projects is how many steps are they willing to do in order to get the final look. But if you want ice cream and you want it to look really kind of whimsical and stuff, you got to put the time in in order to really enjoy the project at the end because you'll be really quite proud of yourself. So I'll see at the end of this round and then you can do the other two by yourself. So I'm almost done this rotation. There's two into this one and the very final stitch if you're keeping it balanced is just one double crochet by itself because it's two, one, two, one, two, one. So that's it. So then what you just want to do is that you need to slip stitch it. So one and two and then that's where it's ending. And then that scallop is done just like that. So it doesn't get any harder than that really and uh, you can fasten that off. Let me just tell you briefly how to start the next one. Just look to your stitch marker. That's where you're gonna join. You're gonna go two stitches over and then you're gonna do your seven around. You're gonna slip stitch two over, put two into each and then slip stitch and then move up again and then do your final and you're gonna do that in both of these and this will take you to the very end of doing your scoops. Please do that and I'm gonna leave that for your homework and then we're gonna begin the assembly process next. So finally we're ready to put everything together. Take care of the loose ends before assembly. Strategically attach the cones to the first scoop of ice cream. So do that for both. Then complete one panel. Then for the second panel lay that new panel over top of the one that's been done completely and match the second scoop of ice cream so it's strategically over top of the other one at the right spot. Once both panels are ready to be attached, turn the panels opposite to each other so the outsides are facing out and then you just have to whip stitch around the edge using the complementary color in order to hide in the sewing strands. It's not hard, it just may take you a little bit of time. So let's begin. 
So now it's time to assemble our cone together. So what we're gonna do is two different panels. So we're gonna do what you see here one time and then do it again and then you'll have two identical panels. What I'd recommend is that you do the first one first. So this cone is going to attach right here right underneath and what you want to do is use the pink and go in and out in order to attach the cone to it. Then what you're gonna do is that you're going to lay this piece over top of this um, of the pink scoop and use this color to secure it to like a semicircle to around like this. So that's what's gonna happen. Then what we're gonna do is you'll do exactly to the other panel but what I recommend is once you do one use that as a template put your cone on top sew this directly and then for this one here you wanna make sure you get it at the same level. So if you lay it on top you can see that there will be um, like it'll be in an identical position. Then what we're gonna do is that we're going to assemble and let me tell you a little bit about that. Once you have both panels done what you're gonna do is that you're going to use the same color that you see. So for example you use the same color as the cone and you will sew in this here is just an overflap. You're gonna sew the co uh, cone completely all the way around obviously not through the middle there. And then what you're gonna do is that you're gonna take the pink here and you're going to sew the pink just like you, he you see here. Okay and you'll do it on both sides. Then you'll take this color and then you'll sew here up into about this spot here where the child then can slip inside the cone. If you make it too narrow the kid can't get inside. Um, you could also just stop here if you wanted to so then you have a complete flap. I guess that's completely up to you and how, uh, how you want to do that. So this is kind of an easy way to do it. So if you do one then do the other and then you're gonna put things together. So I would recommend doing it in sections like that and we're gonna whip stitch that together to do that. So uh, you're gonna see me I do this in fast forward motion and then from there you can see how it's put together and then you can enjoy your snuggle sack.
My friends at Yarnspirations.com and myself Mikey of the Crochet Crowd, we would love to thank you so much for joining us today for this double scoop snuggle sack. It's been a pleasure to teach you today and if you are looking for more free patterns or ideas, you can count on us to keep the inspiration free and the ideas flowing. Have an amazing day. Hope to see you back here real soon. Bye bye.